All right. Now, in this one, we're going to be looking at layer shortcuts. Oh, so immature. Anyways, um, yeah, we're going to be looking at layer shortcuts. Now, if you're looking for on-screen function uh, uh, or painting shortcuts or toolbar shortcuts, I also have a video for those as well. Uh, again, covers all of the shortcuts that I generally uh, use in my particular workflow. Um, so you can go check th those out as well. All right. Um, but in this particular one, we're going to be looking at the layer panel. Now, before we actually get started, there's one thing I want to mention first, and that is if you actually click on the pancake menu up here on the top right of your layer palette uh, panel and you scroll down, you're going to see panel options and you can select the size of your actual preview icon. In my particular case, I like keeping it on small, not off because I need that. I use that um, to do certain functions that I'm going to be showing you today. I sure keyboard shortcuts for them. I personally don't like using large icons because I don't find them particularly useful. They don't really help my workflow and they eat up a lot of space on my layer palette. And I like keeping things compact so I can, I can reserve as much screen real estate towards my painting and not all of my menus. I don't like having crazy menus all over the place. It makes me feel a little claustrophobic. So with that said, um, I tried to organize this as well as I can, but you know, in certain cases it gets a little random because it's random stuff. What can I tell you? So, if we look at the first one, the first is just basically selecting a layer. This is really just as basic as it gets. You know, once you get into Photoshop, you can select uh, whatever layer just by clicking on it with left click if you're working with a mouse or of course, just clicking it with your stylus pen. Um, but after that, you might want to get into selecting multiple layers. So there's two different, there's two main ways of doing it. The first is to select everything between two specific layers. So everything between layer A and layer N, okay, such as this one to this one. If I want to select everything in between, I'll click on the first layer and then I will hold shift and click on the second layer. Now I've selected everything within the two. And of course, if I want to deselect them, I have to click on an, in an unselected layer, right? I'm wondering if you can actually do it with, yeah, you can also just click on any, any, any one specific layer without holding down shift. The other way is to select specific layers. Um, isolating specific ones, you don't want to select them all, you just want to isolate certain specific ones. In that particular case, you hold down control. So if I hold down control, I can isolate certain specific layers, or in this case, groups, right? Because these with the little icon here, little folder icon or groups, but it, it, it responds the same way, essentially. Okay. Um, uh, so that's that. Now, if I'm working on an actual painting, if I'm actually working on a drawing or whatever, or some graphic design project for a website or a photograph that has multiple different layers on it, and I want to select specific things, there are ways of doing this that are very, that are much easier, much quicker. All right. So if we look at this painting here, this is one of my one of my paintings, King's Harem. Okay. And the reason I picked this one in particular is because everything's been separated onto different specific layers. In this particular case, I can flatten that out. So I've got my characters on one and I've got my vines on the next and then I've got my platform and then I've got my background. Okay. So um, everything separated on separate layers. Now, in certain instances, I have gotten, <laughs> I've gotten um, uh, files. Like if I'm, you know, working as a supervisor or director, I get files sometimes there's like 600 layers on it and I have to figure out what's what very quickly. Okay. And furthermore, I have to make selections and organize and flatten and compress things very, very fast. I don't want to spend hours and hours doing this kind of stuff, nor do I want to be intimidated or frightened by the file that I'm looking at because I don't know what's what. So in that particular case, um, one of the keyboard shortcuts that I find extremely handy when working in the layers palette is how to make a selection based on the pixels, the active pixels on a specific layer. So if I look here on this layer, it's only the, and I'm showing and hiding this layer just by clicking on the little eyeball icon here, it's only my characters. And I want to select the pixels, only the pixels that are active on this specific layer. So the keyboard shortcut for that is to hold down the shift key and then scroll my mouse over the preview panel, not the text, but here over the little window. And you'll notice that my cursor turns into a little marquee tool. Well, if I click now, if I click, it selects those active pixels. Now, if I want to copy and paste, I've made a copy of that specific layer, those specific things on that particular layer. Or let's say if I wanted to make a selection, but I wanted to extract the sky behind it. Well, I make a selection like that. I click on the other layer and then I do a copy and paste of the sky. Ooh, look at that. 
kind of cool, huh? You'll be surprised how practical this comes in in certain cases. So I'm gonna, if you stick around at the end, I'm going to show you uh, how we can actually use a lot of these different functionalities to create to do something pretty cool with it. Something that I show my students all the time. So, um, so that's that. So let's go back to our our list here. So we have select active and then oh yes. Now, notice that I have all these different elements on different layers. Now, if you looked at my my last video, the one on function um, uh, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, you, there's certain there's a certain Photoshop and Adobe programs generally tend to work within a certain common language using reusing certain keyboard shortcuts in multiple different places on mul multiple different applications for the sake of quick and in intuitive uh, migration from one application to another or just getting familiar with an application quickly Adobe's fantastic for this uh, and one of them is, for instance, when you want to add or subtract a selection. So if I have a selection, I hold down my control and I click on that and I've selected this, but I also want to select the branches or the vines behind them. Well, to do that, I hold down control and shift simultaneously. And you'll notice that my icon turns, my cursor turns into a little selection marquee tool with a plus sign on it. So I click on that. Now I've got both of these together. Now if I do a copy paste merged, now I've got the vines and the characters on one layer because I've merged everything that was within that selection. Okay, so I can select and, and add it to my selection that way. I can also subtract from my selection. So let's say I want to select the characters minus this area that the branch is on for whatever crazy reason. In this particular case, it's kind of doesn't make any sense, but for the sake of argument, let's just do that. Okay, and I might want to extract a selection. Well, I have my character here but I want to subtract the vine area, but keep the rest of it selected. So all I have to do is hold down um, Control and Alt, and notice that my cursor turns into a little minus sign, just like it was when I was doing playing with marquee or, or uh, marquee tools or selection tools. And here, I can extract the part of the tree that was, and if we isolate that, we can see what I've just deselected. Now if I do a copy paste merged, oh, schnizzle, I've just thingied my thingy, you know what I'm saying? So that's what's up. So if we move on to the next one, um, so that's that's how to quickly do selections. It's something I find very, very practical when working directly in the in the palette. All right. Uh, so we got a control shift multiple preview. Just a control shift preview. Okay, that's good. Now duplicating. Duplicate. Duplicate, duplicate. Duplicate of a duplicate. So if we look at duplicating, the first thing is um, well, it's not specific to duplicating, but it's something that will come in very handy when we're creating when we're working with layers is to create a new layer. So the keyboard shortcut for creating a new layer, uh, just a new layer, is Control, Shift, and N. So Control, Shift, N, and that creates a new layer with a dialog box. That means with this new layer dialog box, so I can come in and label it anything I want. Dialog box, okay? That way I've, I've labeled it right away. However, if I just wanna create a new layer, Without the dialog box, it's Control Alt Shift N, and now I've just created a new layer that's labeled the next la layer 25 or layer 26 or whatever the case might be. Okay, if I keep doing that, it'll keep adding it up by one number. Okay, um, but personally, there's nothing stopping me from going. You know, so using a keyboard shortcut for creating a new layer is. You know, whatever. It doesn't save me a stitch of time. It's the same number of clicks, essentially. The only time I use, I really rely on keyboard shortcuts is when it saves me clicks. That's that's really, because that adds up and you work a lot more quickly and intuitively. But in that particular case, it's not something I particularly do. Okay, so, um, so yeah. So that's creating a new layer or creating a new layer with a dialog box if you find that particularly... Um, if you find this particularly practical. Now, the other thing that I use this for, that I very often uh, use my layer palette for, is to duplicate a layer, but for specific reasons. In the last video, I was showing you how you could work directly on screen and just make copies of something directly on screen using the Alt key. However, there's a catch-22 to this, because when I'm making a copy, I technically kind of sort of have to displace it a little bit for it to make a proper copy of it, okay? However, I might want, more often than not, I want to make a copy of something in exactly the same spot. And that's where I will rely more on my layers palette to do that rather than doing it on screen. So the way to do that is, again, using the Alt key. And I can click and drag down 
or click and drag up depending on my what depending on how I want to organize my files actually it's not working this way maybe if I do it with my vines there you go I think it's because it's at the top sometimes it can give me a little attitude I can easily go down and you can see I'm making multiple uh, layers now where does this come in handy this comes in handy in my particular workflow how I work generally when I'm doing painting is I keep certain things on a separate layer as you can see here I've got different layers of depth so I've got my character vines platform and sky on separate layers but I don't have 600 layers I don't have a separate layer for the helmet for the beard all that kind of crap that's how I used to work not anymore okay but what I'll do is I personally like to work on one layer because I erase I sculpt I do all kinds of things so what I might very well do is work, I'll make a duplicate so I'll, I'll alt click and drag I'll make a duplicate I'll hide the original and here I'll continue working on my painting as I see fit okay okay For some reason it's being very temperamental with my oh because my layer is set to multiply for some reason it decided to default to multiply he's very bizarre yeah that's why I was doing that so let me make a duplicate delete this layer and here set to normal and now I can just blend and paint normally now once I'm happy with the way this looks and I'm happy and I'm ready to move forward with it what do I do I duplicate it hide and keep working and it's a way of keeping little backups a to make sure I don't screw anything up and dis and damage work that I'm happy with or B if I want to show people the progression of a certain painting and show how I've gone step by step through it I have all the original versions going down now in the case that I'm not doing that once I reach a certain point if I'm happy I'll just select them and delete them and I'll just keep the original layer because I'll end up with like 20 different layers in that case right but let's not save it like that because I don't want to screw up a painting that took me a long time to paint <laughs> So that's how that's one of the main reasons because I want to duplicate it in precisely the same spot. I don't want to displace it. So by copying the layer, I'm duplicating it in exactly the same location. And that that's more conducive for this particular portion of my work, the, this particular facet of my work. All right. Otherwise, I'll just just hit the alt key and uh, and move it as such. So uh, da, 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 click and drag. Da, 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 da. OK, yes. I can also duplicate a layer um, with or without a dialog box just by hitting Control J. And notice how it automatically created a new layer of my thing going upwards. Okay, so it, it duplicated it upwards. Doesn't matter. I can I, I can always just do that. Okay, and this can be this can be practical for a lot of people. So I just do Control J or Control Alt J if I want to do it and name it. So blah, and now I've automatically got a new layer there. So that's another way but personally I just I generally tend to use my brush for everything so I just hold alt and I think also because I have alt set to my pen button here I just click and drag like that with my brush I don't even have to hold down the alt key on my thing so that's selection and, and, and duplication now things get a little bit more random I'm just gonna throw kind of some different things at you in no particular order but things that I find very very practical in my particular workflow so okay for the, so the first very very basic one is if I'm working with multiple layers here let's say I've got a ton of different layers I can use my mouse wheel if I want to to just scroll up and down okay but of course I don't normally do it like that okay normally what I'll do is I'll just click and drag with my mouse especially since I started with my, with my Cintiq I'm always using my mouse for everything my uh, pen for everything the other thing is previewing layers this is something that comes in very very handy let's say okay let's say for, for the sake of argument, because this is somewhere where I very often find this comes in handy. This comes in, this is a very practical thing. Let's say I've decided to paint a little bit of paint here. And it's a specific orange. Now I've painted with this specific shade of orange, but if I just use my eyedropper tool and I want to capture that orange color, unfortunately the eyedropper is is now the 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 sample that it's taking is a sample of the orange with a little bit of opacity showing the skin underneath. So it's not going to be the same orange. Every single time I sample that color, it's going to be a little bit darker and muddied with the color underneath, unless I'm working with completely opaque paint. So, so what I need to do is find a way to isolate this specific layer so I can select that specific orange that hasn't been blended in with the colors on the layers underneath it. So the bad way of doing it would be to hide all the layers but that, including the background layer, and 
select that orange, then show them all again, and now I can keep painting with that orange. But that is okay in this case where A, all of my, all of my layers are, are necessary. I don't have any kind of inactive layers floating around where I don't know whether or not they apply. And that really makes a big difference in terms of my organization if I don't know what's what, right? I'm working on somebody else's file. I'm trying to figure out how they organized it. And they've got a bunch of layers that are hidden. And I don't know if I hide them all and show them all which ones were which. I lose track of this kind of stuff. That can be very stressful. So um, I don't want to do it like that. The if For me to hide or show a layer, such as this orange layer, I just click this eyeball icon to the left of the preview pane on and off. But there's a keyboard shortcut for hiding everything but that layer. Okay, so if I hold down Alt or trusty Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, okay, if I if I Alt and click on that eyeball, I hide everything but that layer. Now I can sample that color and keep painting. Sample that color and keep painting. Now there's a little thing to take note of. Notice that I clicked on it, I painted, and I unclicked on it. But watch what happens if I do this. If I click on it, I sample it, then I go, oops, oh, oh crap. It only remembers it if that's the last thing that I did, okay? So it's very important if that's the case that you hide it, select, hide it, and keep painting, all right? Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to, if you accidentally click on another layer, well, you're screwed, you're gonna have to go and figure out, if, if you're working with 600 layers and you're trying to figure out what's what, hopefully if you're working with somebody who's the slightest bit considerate, you will not have to work on a file that's 600 layers, but I'm afraid to break it to you. But when you work in the industry, sometimes you get files from people that have tons of layers and you got to organize it. It's this, that. You're just going to have to, you're going to have to find your way to navigate through it quickly. And this is one of the great, trick, great tricks for that. Okay. So that's for hiding a specific layer. After that, um, ah, yes, this is another very practical trick. And this I use in conjunction with something else very often. If I'm, let's say I'm working on something and I, I'm working on a certain preview layer and I just wanted to show you an example of something. Like for instance, when I'm showing examples to my students, my online mentorship, I want to show them something. And I'm doing that on a separate layer, but I don't want to accidentally mix up my sample layer with their painting layer or it's going to get, it's going to screw things up. So I'll create a new layer and I'm painting on it. But before I paint on it, I want to label it, kind of like putting a post-it note on it and, or, or, or a little tag on it and saying, this is my layer so I don't confuse it with the other ones. What you can do is right click on the eyeball and you can select one of several colors, okay? And you can also see that by right clicking, hide this layer, show hide all other layers type of idea. You can also do it there. So here, I set it to red. Now I know this one's mine and I can show them this and all that. And when I'm done, I just delete it or, you know, or I can just hide it and they know this is my sample, my sample layer. So if my students need to go and check out what I wrote, they just go, oh yeah, I know the red one was the one that he put his notes on. And that's, intu that's quick and intuitive for them. It's also very handy if you want to organize your layers, right? If you want to organize them that way. Now, the next thing I want to show you with respect to, to this particular feature is grouping and ungrouping, because this is something that I find super practical when I'm trying to organize myself with very complex numbers of layers and files. This helps me really organize myself well. To group something, the keyboard shortcut for grouping a selection of layers is to select certain specific layers and then hit Control G. G is in Gary or group, right? Control G and that automatically groups them. All right. Now, as you can see, we've got all of our stuff in that group. Now, of course, I could also, if I wanted to, I don't have to select them in sequence. I, I can select, let's say, these three minus the vines and group those. The only thing you got to take into account is that when you group them, they can they have to change the order of them. So by grouping them, I'm going to move everything above the vine layer and it's going to move my vines now behind my background layer and we lose the vines. So of course you got to keep an eye out for that, right? But to group now, if I want to ungroup, it's control shift U. Oh, no, sorry. Control alt G control shift. Oh, sorry. Control shift G like that and that ungroups them okay so control G to group control shift G to ungroup now this is where this comes in very handy imagine I've got 200 layers and 
a bunch of these layers have been grouped. Now I gotta work on some of I've gotta fix some of those layers because I found out there was a little mistake on some of those layers, and I've gotta fix something on those layers, but then I have to remember what order that group was in. So the trick is, this is a trick I do for organization, is I color them. I right click on the eyeball of the group, and let's say group them red. Now when I when I when you look at them, when you color a group, you color all of the layers in that group. Now I do control shift G. Now they're all colored. I come in here, I fix this layer, and now since I still know, or I can create a new layer, doesn't matter, but it's within this group, I do my fixes, then I just select them and I group them, and I remember which ones were, were a part of the group. I don't lose it, right? And because of that, and, and if I want to delete that, I just go in here and I delete it as such, right? That kind of idea. But I'm going to ungroup it, and then I'm going to select these and I'm going to delete them, okay? Other, another quick thing is let's say I have a bunch of layers that are all marked as red and I, I don't like this. Whoever did this, it gets on my nerves. It's confusing me that he's got all these different freaking color layers. Group, no color, and ungroup. I've just removed all of the colors like that in one shot. Instead of having to go no color, no color, no color, which believe it or not, that's how I used to do it. That's why I know it's a lifesaver because... <laughs> because... I used to have to do that, okay? Uh, the next thing is changing blend modes. Now, there's many different ways you can go about this. One of the major ways, let's say I'm creating a new layer and I'm painting something and I wanna, I wanna experiment to see which blend mode, blend modes being this menu over here at the top of your palette, which blend mode goes best. Very often you wanna experiment and see, sometimes you wanna play around with different effects and just see which ones create the coolest effect. So one of the ways you can do it is by clicking once to open the menu, click a second time, and notice that they've still got the blue selection around it. Now I can use my mouse wheel to mouse through it. However, there's an easier way of doing this. There's an easier way of doing this. I can create a new layer, I can paint on it. If you look here, we can do Alt plus Shift plus, oh wait, sorry, no, sorry. Um, shift plus a plus or minus. So while I'm on that layer, I can hold down Shift and hit the plus, or minus, and I could actually scroll through my different blending options. Okay, it's kind of the same. It's exactly the same thing as as what I just did. I just don't have to go through that extra step of selecting it and using my mouse wheel. Furthermore, I don't even have to grab my mouse for this, right? And then I go back to normal. However, if you're like me, or if you're like a lot of digital painters, there's certain blending options that you use more frequently, such as multiply, overlay, soft light, uh, that kind of idea. In that particular case. And this is something that a lot of you pro Photoshop users might not know about because this is kind of a little exclusive trick that not many people use, but it's very handy if you use these blending options often. If you hold down Alt plus Shift plus a specific letter on your keyboard, there's different letters designated to different blending options, okay? And these, I've marked down the, the four that I use most often. G for Lighten, O for Overlay, M for Multiply, or F for Soft Light. Those are four that I use all the time. They're very frequent ones, okay? So if I create a new layer, okay, and I wanna set this to Multiply, taking note of one important thing, you have to be in the Move tool for this to work. If you're in B for Brush and you try to do it, it's not gonna work. If I do, if I do Alt, Shift, M, it doesn't do anything. I have to be in my move tool. So I hit V for move tool. Now Alt Shift M converts it automatically to multiply because that's the keyboard shortcut for Alt multiply. For overlay, Control Alt, uh, a Shift Alt O for overlay. Or what I use very often is Shift Alt G for lighten. Okay, I use lighten very often for doing atmospheric depth and stuff like that. Okay, so Alt Shift and just hit that keyboard shortcut. Now when you know that. If you know that multiply is an overlay is a layer is a blending option used very often, or you know multiply is a blending option used very often, um, you can set that to a keyboard shortcut. And once you do that, you can set that to your tablet in case you want to set that blending option frequently. You just hit, or you can set that to a specific uh, function key, okay, and you're good to go. And you can just hit that function key and immediately switches your your layer mode to multiply or overlay. It's very very handy. I love this stuff. Okay ultimate power all right now um clip masking again something that you're going to use extremely frequently if you work in digital painting okay so to clip mask something 
you can create a new layer. You just create a new layer, and then you hold down the Alt key, and you uh, click between the layer. Watch what happens. If I hold down Alt, if I scroll and I go between the layers along the line, you're going to notice that my cursor turns into a clip mask. And what that essentially does is it parents that layer to the to that base layer, to that kind of that mother layer. So when I paint, it's only going to paint over the active area of that layer underneath it. And I can cre create multiple clip mask layers. Actually, just let me open my magic picker here. Or here, I'll just use my regular default Photoshop. Oh yeah, the D if you're working in Photoshop C CC or above, um, if you hit the F6 key, it's going to open up your color palette. That's the keyboard shortcut for your color palette like that. And F5 is to open up your brush presets panel. And then from there, you can click here and open up your, your all of your brush presets where you've got all your brushes on that. It's a little F5 or F6. Okay, so this is now, now I just don't, and now I don't have to keep going into my thing to select my colors here. Okay, that's what a clip mask does. It only, only the colors that are, only the area that is active on this original layer will show up. Now here's a little tidbit. You remember I was showing you the keyboard shortcut for showing or hiding everything but a specific layer? If you're working within a clip mask layer, It'll only pre you'll only be able to preview that layer properly if you're if you're previewing the original base mo mother layer, so to speak. Okay, so if I hold down Alt and click on the eyeball here, I'll be able to see the original layer. However, if I do that on this layer, watch what happens. It's this layer plus the main layer. Okay, but I need to select that orange. Ah, so how do you do that? It's actually a three-step process. You hold down, you unclip mask it. Then you keep your finger on Alt and you click on the eyeball. You sample your color. Then, in this order, don't screw up the order. You re-show it, and then you re-clip mask it. Okay? Because if you do it otherwise, you're gonna have to go and re-show all of your layers again. And if you, again, if you're working with 100 layers, it's gonna go. Oh man, I have to figure out what's what again. So, unclip mask, hide all layers, sample. Show all layers and then Control Z to back backtrack and put your clip masks back in place. Okay, a little quick trick, but I don't think that those are very good paint colors for this particular painting. After that, um, ah yes, here's another quick trick. You know when you first start a new document, and generally speaking, when you start a new document, your background layer it's usually set as called background. Okay, and it's locked by default. Okay. Well, generally speaking, what you do is you double click on it. Oops. Uh, you double click on it. Oh, well, if it's the original layer, because I've already done this, but if you, you'll double click on it here, I have the option to, to name it. But normally if you double click it, it opens the dialog box. You give it a new name or you just hit enter and it'll save it as layer zero. And then you can actually paint on it. In this case, I've already done this earlier, um, but you have actually two other quick shortcuts that don't really save you a ton of time, but it's worth knowing. So to unlock it, one is you can actually physically click the lock and drag it down to the garbage can and that unlocks it. Or the other way is to click, hold Alt and double click your layer. Oops, like that. And what that would do on your background layer is unlock it. Okay, Alt and double click the layer. That's basically it. Now, last but not least is merging layers. Now the default for merging a layer, okay, let's go back on this. Okay, let's ungroup this and I'll select and I'll delete it. The next is merging. So let's say, for the sake of argument, I'm not going to do this, to, I'm, I don't want to keep it this way on this, but let's say I'm just going to copy these. I'm going to make a copy. This, these are my originals, so I grouped it. I'm going to hide it. Now, in this particular case, I want to group all these three together. Well, if I just want to merge down, I just want to collapse this one down and this one together, I do Control E to merge down. Now if we look, we can see they're both on the same layer. Okay. However, I can do this with any selection of layers that I want. I can click and select this one, this one, and this one, and Control E, and I can flatten it. Now all these three are on the same layer. Okay. And I've isolated that one. So, or I can just do them like this and, and flatten them out like that. Of course, technically speaking, if I wanted to flatten my image, the easiest way to do that is just do Control A, and then Control Shift C, Control Shift V, and I copy paste merged, job done. All right. So, <laughs> so
thank you for for holding out i know there's a lot of information but like i said you can um if you want you can do a quick screen cap of this ah yes sorry one last thing i promised you a little quick trick this trick is for doing thumbnails and it utilizes a lot of these keyboard shortcuts that i generally use i, I thumbnail my work all the time to give me little quick disposable uh previews of my work before i send them to a client okay um and this is generally how i do it create a new layer just clicking on the thing and i'm going to fill this layer with black or a dark gray then i create a new layer and let's say hmm i want all of my thumbnails to be the exact same proportions as this document here so i'm going to do Control a then i'm going to select a color a random color and I'm going to fill it and control D to deselect now control T and I want to transform this layer down this is utilizing everything from all three videos okay I want to scale this down towards the middle and make it more of a thumbnail size okay then I move it over here hit enter okay now I want to duplicate it so I hit V I make sure I'm in the move tool and I duplicate it now if you're working in Photoshop CC or or above one of the wonderful features of CC is the fact that it automatically snaps to measurements, which I find hugely, hugely beneficial. I used to go through all this different rigmarole to make sure I got my, my transformations to be duplicate. Okay, and I'm sure graphic designers get a lot, of, get a wonderful kick out of this. In Photoshop CC, it actually does this automatically. That's why you see all those pink lines and and measurements on my screen. So I make a duplicate, and then I make another duplicate. And notice that it snaps to that original measurement and it'll tell you when you've got the same measurement. So I'll do it again. I duplicate once and then duplicate a second time. Like that. Okay. Now I've got an equal measurement. Now I want to duplicate down. So I'm going to, I'm going to merge it down two times, control E twice. And then I want to copy it on screen, but I want to copy it directly down horizontally. I don't want to do this to it. I want it to go directly down. So I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt together, and I'm going to drag down so it'll drag it down uniform. Note in Photoshop, I think it's Photoshop CC, one important thing to note as well is if I hold down Shift and Alt together, I can do it. I can copy it horizontally in a perfect straight line, uh, horizontally or vertically, or diagonally. You can also go to perfect 45 degree diagonal thing as well. That's, that's a handy tip. I make another copy. I merge down again. I hit the V and I move it down, I center it, then I hold the control key, I click on this, I click on my layer that has all of these on it, I select my black layer, then I hit delete. Now I can delete this original layer, and here I can create a new layer underneath, I can fill it with some medium gray or something like that. Now when I'm painting, we're using alt backspace, now I can paint within this specific area or I can draw, or I can do whatever. See? Okay, let's get my palette back, so F6. Okay, and I can paint, and I can do all my thumbnails very quickly within this area. Why I keep setting my layer to multiply by default? I don't know. Probably because I've been demanding too much of Photoshop. There you go, and that's how I do that, and I did it in a split second. So if we do it in real time speed, just give you a little preview, okay? I go, I can do, I can do Control Shift N, new layer, fill it with a dark color, new layer, all. I'm going to fill it with a random color, transform it, scale it down. Since it's selected, I can duplicate it without creating a new layer. So in this particular case, I'm not even going to have to. Uh, I'm not even going to have to. Um, uh, 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 merge it and then I can select the same thing I can, I can go like that oops like that I move it down to where I want it select delete new layer and boy do you look like a badass when you draw like this like that oh actually I didn't want to just fill the squares I actually wanted to fill the whole thing so I had to deselect it and if I want to make sure that I don't draw on these two layers I lock them and then I can create a new layer, select the color, and have fun. All right? That's a little quick trick. And once you get f comfortable with, with Photoshop, I swear to God, you're going to look like a StarCraft champion, the way you're going to be able to macro your 
micro, micro your macro. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. So hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, these tutorials. If there's any other sections of keyboard shortcuts, any other facets, because I covered functional on screen, toolbar, and, um, and layers, the three main areas where you're going to be using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. If there's any other, let me know which ones, or if there's any section of keyboard shortcuts that I haven't mentioned, let me know and I'll create a new video for you guys. I have no problem with that. What I really wanted to do is just create a kind of one-stop shop where you can kind of find all of your keyboard short shortcuts and uh, get yourself flowing full speed uh, in Photoshop so you can increase your productivity uh, and have more fun painting instead of sitting there trying to navigate through all of this nonsense, which can be very time consuming. Uh, remember, once again, I have an online art mentorship. If you're interested, uh, Lucid Pixel, you can go and check the description below. I have all the details and links there as well as uh, upcoming openings for my mentorship. And, um, and that's it. All right. So thank you for joining me. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.